Well, we did ask to speak to the Liberal Democrat leader and Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, but he wasn't available. Joining me now, though, is Tim Farron, who is president of the Lib Dems. Uh, Tim Farron, you heard the two women there. Mm -hmm. Alison Goldsworthy says you took the coward's way out. Bridget Harris is tearing up her membership card, and she says kick the guy out. Yeah, well, I'm gutted to hear Bridget's conclusions. I'm not surprised to hear either of their conclusions. I think where there was cowardice, I think, and where there is something we've just got to be fully uh, accepting of guilt over is that over a decade, uh, this was allowed to fester. And the women in question, not just uh, Alison uh, and Bridget, but others as well, uh, who made complaints, raised concerns, uh, were not taken, no, they were not taken seriously. Certainly those issues were not pursued. And that's an outrage, but, frankly. But still those concerns aren't being taken seriously. Because, I mean, Bridget Harris says, we know we're not lying. So who yeah. do you believe, them or Lord Renard? Well, I, b I believe them, and I believe principally Alistair Webster's report, which is very clear. I mean, he is bound by, and the party's bound by, the fact that we chose many years ago to opt for a criminal level of burden of proof. And, that, and that's something we need to reflect on. We do more, so you we don't believe to, Lord Renard? Uh, well, I believe what the, re what the report says. The report says Which means quite you clearly, don't believe Lord Renard? Well, I'm, 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 we've got to be very careful what we say, but what I would say is that Alistair Webster's report is very clear. He says that he accepts the uh, the testimony of the women, including the two we've just heard. He believes that uh, actions took place that were upsetting and were indeed caused by Lord Renard, and therefore he should apologise. I think that's fairly clear. But Lord Renard denies all these allegations. And I, and I think that is regrettable, given what uh, Alistair Webster has concluded in his report today. Now, I think what Nick Clegg and I have both agreed on is this reminds us that our disciplinary procedures need to be reviewed. It would seem ludicrous to the reasonable person in the street that the testimony of uh, the women in question can be seen as, I quote, broadly credible, and indeed that Lord Renard should be asked to apologise. It seems ludicrous to the reasonable right. person in the street for them then not to be a sanction, so we need to change our rules. Exactly, but you You've asked for an apology. Nick Clegg's asked for an apology. He's not here to say that tonight, unfortunately. Um, what if Lord Renard refuses to apologise? Well, I mean, the sanctions that we have are obviously uh, have gone as a result of, of today. I think what he has to do is understand that the body of public opinion within the party will be such that uh, they will have watched, I mean, I imagine the number of Liberal Democrats watching this programme tonight will be significantly higher even than it normally is, and, he, and they, will, they will draw their own conclusions as a consequence of all this. You know, there, there is no such thing as an unforgivable act, I guess, in the end, but for, there's got to be a degree of repentance, and, but you've admitted and there is you're, no sense of that whatsoever. But you're powerless to take any action now, aren't you? Well, you're I just relying on his I, goodwill I, and he's running rings ready. I he personally can't apologized. expel the guy, um, and neither can Nick Clegg. There are appropriate rules to be gone through. I mean, the reality is, of course, if uh, Chris Renard was still a member of staff, there would be a different and much lower burden of proof required. But as an ordinary member of the party, as he is now, uh, we went through the appropriate process. Uh, you know, Alistair Webster is an eminent guy and impeccable in his credentials, has been, has been fair, has been neutral. You can read through the, between the lines of his, of his statement today about what he feels could and should have happened okay. instead. So will you pledge to change the rules so that you can kick Lord Renard out? Uh, I will pledge to change the rules so that people can be kicked out for a much more reasonable But will you level return to this case? Well, you can't. I mean, it's not fair and just to, to go back and, uh, and uh, bring in retrospective rules. We all, know, we all know that. But I think all of us, I mean, without a doubt... Do you think the women have got justice, though? Lord no. Renard says justice no, has no, been no. done. They have not got justice. I mean, but principally, they've not got justice because the party, over a decade, at different levels, did not deal with their complaint, allowed it to fester, and justice was absolutely not done. Uh, Lord Renard said he's looking forward to returning to his roles within the party. What roles will he get back? Uh, well, I mean, he has no formal position. He, as, as Nick rightly said, he will have no involvement in the general election campaign. He's elected to one subcommittee at the moment. To continue on that, he would need to stand for re-election after this year. But and he of course, the membership. To do that. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, he's not said that specifically. But he can stand on that committee until the end of the year. Well, any 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 member of the party can remain on any uh, body that they are elected to. But he's not on the manifesto writing team. I'm a member of that uh, committee. I would recognise him if he was in the room and he's not, and he won't be added to it. And you can't take any action to remove him from that committee? Well, he's not on that committee, and I'm, I'm on it. David Laws chairs it, and he's, he's the, not the, on sorry, the Sorry, the Federal Policy Committee. Uh, no, I can't. I mean, he's elected to it until the remainder of the year. Unless he has no confidence they're removed through a different mechanism, that's, uh, that's something that we can't affect.
But he still retained, he can get the Lib Dem whip back, can't he? I mean, that's still suspended at the moment. That is, the, he voluntarily uh, relinquished the whip, I understand. And so the, the chief whip and the leader of the House of Lords have got to deal with that, and I expect them to do so. You expect the, the whip to remain suspended in other words? Well, that is up to the, 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 the Lord's group. But when all said and done, you talked about, you know, what, what can we do now? What should we do in, re, in, in response? As a, as a result of your investigation last year, let's be honest, we commissioned, I commissioned the Morrissey report, which came out last summer, and has led to vast changes already. Because the reality is, we as a party did not live up to our values in the way we, we treated people who were relatively powerless, making complaints against somebody who was really quite powerful that is unacceptable in any organization as a consequence we've made significant changes I'm not told I, I am not satisfied we've completed them by the way but a new pastoral care officer new new approaches new complaints procedures we will not rest in my view I will not rest until okay. other parties or the voluntary bodies look at the Liberal Democrats and say okay. crumbs they've got the gold standard for dealing with this sort of thing Tim Farron thank you very much for joining me